Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of 10 Minute Misconduct. We are an unofficial FPHL podcast. Super stoked for today's episode. You know our host, Aaron. We got our other host, Sam. And we've got Katie, the Gia Cobra. You guys know her from TikTok. And if you don't, you should. So make sure you go check out her account. But Katie, thank you so much for joining us tonight. How are you doing? Doing good. Thanks so much for having me on. Of course, right when we start, my cat decides to be a problem, but <laughs> we're here. We're rolling with it. <laughs> yeah, that's how we do things over here. You know, we ha- we like to have fun. So let's get um let's get started with tell us you you know, your contents uh, a lot of like you're new to hockey. So tell us how you got started uh, watching hockey and becoming a fan. Um. So I do say it's like. Not great situation, but happy ending. Um, The long short of it is uh, I have a background of working in high-level athletics. Um, Unfortunately, with some issues that occurred there, I ended up with diagnosed PTSD due to being in that world. Um, And I got asked by an author if I could read their book, which happened to be a hockey romance, uh, about January 1st of this year. So I literally kicked off my year with hockey and finished the book and went, wait a minute, I can interact with hockey stuff and not have a problem. Let me see if I can watch a game. Let's just, let's see what happens. Uh, Watched a game, got a full obsession from it, and now I'm subscribed to ESPN Plus and watching games every night and absolutely loving everything to do with it. That is so awesome. And what is the title of the book? Yeah, well, I would have to check. Um, I unfortunately don't know that anymore. It was an advanced copy, so it wasn't anything like final. Um, so I couldn't even tell you what the cover is off the top of my head. You know, it's funny that you mentioned the um, hockey romance because I've actually heard some of the ladies around the arena talking about hockey romance books, and I didn't know it was a thing. But now that you've mentioned it too, I might I might have to check out like a, a there hockey are version so of Fifty many. Shades of Grey. <laughs> <laughs> I I will say, at least from what I've read, a lot of them tend more towards like the cutesy classic kind of rom com romance. Right. Um, it's definitely a growing uh, field of books. Uh, what's her name? Lexi, her husband, is one of the commentators for the Kraken. Um, and she, I guess he used to be a pro player. She's now writing a book that's a hockey romance uh, fiction book. It's just, there's a lot coming out. I have a stack to read in my other room. It's it's definitely a growing <laughs> genre. <laughs> nice. Well, we'll have to, you'll have to put out a video with an updated list of, uh, you know, ones you it's, recommend for it's sure. It's a never-ending list. And I will say that was that first month of just seeing if I could get into hockey. It was like, I think I read 17 books in 17 days. Because uh-huh. it was like, I, I'd been avoiding anything sports. Like, I'm a big reader. I've got books on books on books and I've been avoiding everything uh, sports for probably five or six years at that point so I was just like oh (laughs) new genre let's go I think hockey is so special that way because like you say that you know you've got the trauma issues that led you to kind of realize that hockey might be you know the genre that you can deal with and the genre that can make you feel better and I think for so many of us hockey really is our outlet and really is like our our happy place so it's great to see how many amazing people it can bring together and you know the amazing things that you can do for the sport and that the sport can do for us but I also think there's a very important question that needs to be asked here and we need to know where you stand with your adoption of Bowie ah um (laughs) Well, I I do want to state, since it's some current things that aren't necessarily with the adoption, but um, people have been asking my thoughts on Bowie and Fuego stealing the giant Joey Decord bobblehead statue. (laughs) Um, I'm in full support of that. Finders keepers. um, It's theirs now. (laughs) Uh, And also, I know, oh, I'm going to get his name wrong. Biz? 
is, is that his name? Uh, who hates Bowie, the commentator. Um, oh. I know he uh, recently ripped up a Bowie plushie. Um, oh man, it's war. I was not thrilled. Sounds that like my he child. needs to find a new outlet. A little bit. <laughs> um, last time though, he just Bowie, Bowie came back and beat him up with boxing gloves. So go Bowie. We might just have a repeat of that. And I'm okay with that. Love that, that for <laughs> Bowie. Uh, no, it's uh, Bowie and I will interact sometimes online. Uh, he's popped into a couple of my lives before games. It's, it's, so, it's cool. so awesome. So hopefully someday soon I will get to meet him in person and finalize that adoption. Oh, but Seattle Kraken, get on it. You know, I've if got anyone I've got buddy here ready for him. Yeah. So, so wait, if I'm, anyone I'm, deserves to meet Bowie, it's Katie. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I mean, Kraken, make it happen. So is it safe to say that um, is the Kraken your favorite NHL team? So I'm still deciding. I, I got to tell you, it's uh it's been tough. Uh, right now, my top three are Panthers, Bruins, Kraken. Um, the Panthers, I my parents were Panthers fans. My mom was going to games when the Rats started pregnant with me. So... It's that's kind of like a long time. I'm a flirty and I'm from South Florida. That kind of makes sense. Um, Bruins fans kind of adopted me early on. <laughs> I started talking about the goalie hug and they were like, great, you're one of us. Congrats. Uh, my <laughs> yeah. first and only jersey, which a very, very kind fan sent me recently, was a Bruins oh, jersey. Wow. That's awesome. So I, I got it that. just that's in great. time for playoffs. So I'm very excited about it. And then Kraken, of course, I have my son. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know the rats um I, I you guys don't know what she's referring to the um I don't remember what team it it wasn't a team um there was a player in the locker room right like he it was up- a and I don't remember his name but it was a player in the locker room the old arena had a major rat problem a lot of yes, South Florida that's does <laughs> um yeah <laughs> and uh killed a rat with a stick and then they won the game he scored a bunch of goals so they called it a rat trick and at one point, it was so many rats, they had an extermination company sponsoring it. So they'd wow. go out in their little exterminator <laughs> outfits to sweep up the rats. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love that. Yeah. So I remember the first time I saw the rats thrown on the ice. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? You know, because oh, I'm yeah. actually, I would say, like, still pretty new to hockey um, myself. I've probably only been a hockey fan now for maybe about five years. So, yeah, when I first saw that, I was like, what am I missing here? But, yeah. So what do you got for us, Sam? Now, I do realize Bowie, he came in hot that first year, straight on social media. He wanted to just start fighting all the other mascots and stuff. Other than Bowie, do you have another favorite mascot or is it pretty much Bowie? That's it. <laughs> the one behind me. Um, I mean, Bowie, Bowie came in hot into the scene, but let's face it. Gritty's first tweet was to threaten the Penguins mascot with, you know, murder. So... <laughs> He's gone streaking, willingly and unwillingly. <laughs> Looked straight into the solar eclipse. What more could you ask for? <laughs> Absolutely. Gritty, I will say, he he's top choice. I get oh, it. Yeah. I love Gritty <laughs> so much. I have a very unhealthy Gritty obsession. He's a chaos <laughs> demon, and I am so yeah. here for it. <laughs> and I'm a chaos coordinator by trade, so I need more <laughs> Gritty in my life. <laughs> we all do. It, do. Gritty is good for the soul. Yes. Maybe I'll be there one day. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Go ahead. So you have said before how much you love goalies and how, like, you know, the goalie hug really brought you in and it's goalie, 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 goalies. I am also an avid goalie lover. So what is it for you that not I don't mean attracted in a physical way but what what attracts you to the hilarity of the goalies I mean I think it's just that it's it's the (laughs) hilarity um no somebody I was doing a live stream one day and somebody made the joke that goalies are the catchers of the hockey world like the vibe and energy and I was a catcher for 10 years and so when they said that I was like oh this makes sense now (laughs) um But it's, yeah, the energy, the fact that all of them just have this little funny thing about them. I mean, I think it went 
yeah. goalie hug, Alex Lyon staring into the camera, um, Devin yeah. Levi with his Star Wars meditation. Like it was boom, boom, boom. And recommendations when I started talking about all this, I was like, okay, well, I'm in. Let's go. Flurry. Oh. Yes, yeah, Flurry. Thanking that guy, the- he is something. Thanks his goalposts in English and in French. We love an inclusive king like Flurry. <laughs> I think it's safe to say Flurry is probably the uh, prank board champion in the NHL. Like goalie, oh, sure. any player doesn't matter. Um, so you recently went to a uh, Solar Bears game like, for the ECHL, which is a couple steps higher than um, the Fed, which is the league we cover. What did what did you think of that environment? Um. So mm, okay. <laughs> so prior to that i went to a jacksonville iceman game um i they're also echl the fans there were very warm welcoming it was a very great environment um it was a lot of fun everybody was really nice um one of the fans actually recognized me and went down to the ice got me a puck like oh, it was wow. really really cool the solar bears like themselves their staff their admin great um they actually uh, sent shades up in the middle of the game to give me a little gift bag, which was very sweet. Um, and think something I haven't talked about much is that I actually missed the first game I was supposed to go to due to a family emergency. Um, and the Solar Bears reached out and were like, hey, second set of tickets is on us. We'll bring you like, so that was great. Um, I won't say what theme night it was, but it was a theme night. And I think that influenced some of the people that were there and the crowd was um interesting. Uh, I I got look. I'm I'm all for you know ragging on the team and ragging on the other team, but like there are only so many. Guys, guys, you guys, I'm not know we saying love you anything negative. I love y'all, Danbury people. <laughs> but it's a so, really good documentary about it, and 
that arena and that team is still it's around under a different name. It is a fed team now. Um, it's around under a different name, but it's so awesome. I will definitely check it out. I'm seeing in the chat, um, no sound. If you guys have sound, can you give me just like a thumbs up to, to let us know or if we need to make, make any adjustments? Okay, it should be back now. Sorry about that, guys. Um, go ahead, Aaron. I didn't mean to cut you guys off. Oh, no, you're okay. I think I said most of what I needed to say. Just, it's still, they're still around. It's still crazy. It's still really awesome. They still have probably one of, if not the most devoted sections of fan. I mean, they, there's actually rules that were made in the Fed this year about noisemakers because their team, their fans were so notorious. And it wasn't just them by any means, but largely in part to the Danbury fans because they were so notorious for distracting the away team and making it so that the away team's coach couldn't coach from behind the bench with their different noisemakers and literal air horns. And it was just, it's crazy. You've got to look into it. It's one of the coolest stories, I think, in professional sports. You handbooks and different things, and you're like, oh, I wonder why this rule was made. It's always interesting to learn why. (laughs) There's a lot of rules in the Fed that are that way. And you know, with you being um, in Florida, there there's actually some some Fed teams not too far um, from you. There's uh, one in Georgia, which uh, me and Sam were Dragons fans. Uh, you got Mississippi. There's Baton Rouge, North Carolina, Virginia. Don't That's- forget Athens. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, looks like Athens, Athens Georgia is joining. Might have to get up to Georgia at some point. That's I do find that it's. I love that in Florida, it's either you're going NHL or you're going ECHL. Like, mm-hmm. those are your options. And everybody's like, oh, yeah. go to an AHL game. Go to whatever. I'm like, it's not here. <laughs> we don't the, have uh, that. <laughs> yeah, Georgia's got uh, the Atlanta Get- Gladiators and Savannah Ghost Pirates for the ECHL. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Athens the Ghost Pirates will be there. joining... Uh, Columbus in the FPHL. You got the Making Mayhem, who's the SPHL. So it's like kind of a variety. No yeah, NHL. I know, and <laughs> I, I know there's Vegas. a lot of people bringing up the uh, Atlanta and Georgia conversation for an NHL team. And I've heard that that didn't go well the last few times. Right. But it, which is I, crazy because down in Columbus, two hours south of there, we go nuts for hockey down there. We feel mm-hmm. we've got a, a pretty large arena. It sits, well, how many, Sam? Is it like for 7,500 7, or something? 7,400, 7,500. And oh. uh, like this year, we averaged over 3,500. You know, since COVID, they brought the team back. So since COVID, it, uh, it's been getting better and better now that COVID's kind of it, it takes time. just a flu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of the uh one of our OGs in mod, she's amazing. Hey Abby, she said, uh, let let her know if you come up to a Dragons game, the tickets are on her. So I think that's really cool. So if you make it up there, I promise you the Columbus fans will take really good care of you. Well, I appreciate that. And at some at some point I definitely want to travel to games and hit a bunch of them at all different levels. Um, I think at this point I have standing offers for probably almost every NHL and half of the AHL teams. From that's fans. so cool. And that's yeah. been the incredible thing here is like, it really hasn't been teams that have done things overall. I mean, obviously Solar Bears were very nice and kind to me about things, but it's been fans who have just been like, hey, want to come to this, want to do this. Here's, you know, Gritty came from a fan. Yeah. That, w- that was somebody who was just like, hey, I saw you had a hard week. Here's a giant stuffed Gritty. And he lives in my office now. <laughs> we all that's need friends amazing. like that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's she just been insane. Week, here's a gritty. It's we all need a gritty. <laughs> we do. <laughs> so um, how did things take off with TikTok? You've got a pretty large following, as do amazing, and they're funny. If you like, I said, guys, if you haven't checked out her account, go check her out. Give her a follow. She's really creative with her content. Um, but how that how that all come about? Um, so it, some people might recognize some of it, but like that whole shelf is Star Wars stuff. Um, I started as a Star Wars content creator. I take that back. Oh. I started as a probably Twilight content creator, technically. 
Um, <laughs> love you for that. The my old yeah, Twilight sure. books are on the shelf that you guys can't see. Um, but that's kind of how I started. Was I would do like a book club live stream. Um, fell in love with Star Wars during COVID, and that's just kind of what I did for two years. Um, so a, a year, literally a year ago, I was in London at Star Wars Celebration, which is the big international Star Wars convention that happens every two years. Um, so I was talking with companies and doing things with them and promoting their stuff, um, while I was there, but it, it just kind of got tough, especially after the strikes happened. Uh, I stood in solidarity with the unions. A lot of people did. So a lot of us who mainly talked about one thing on TV or movies kind of got shut down on what we could and couldn't do. So it was just kind of like, oh, I'm, I'm really burnt out. This isn't fun anymore. Um, and it just coincidentally, I made a one-off video about hockey after watching it for the first time. And was just like, okay, this, this went well. What happens if I talk more about it? Like, do people want to hear what I have to say? Um and it's been great since. Like, and I will tell you, fans of hockey compared to fans of Star Wars, they're so much better. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll say that also goes for even the literal, like my other thing I would talk about, and it's still, I think, in my profile bio is like real life space nerd. Um, so I used to talk a lot about NASA launches and things like that. Um, I grew up watching launches. I grew up close to Cape Canaveral. Um, and NASA's invited me to launches and things like that. And I love it. But the That's people cool. involved in watching those videos, it's more work to moderate the comments than it is to do the videos. Oh, wow. Yep. It's, it's been nice to be in a fan base. I'm sure with playoffs, things will get a little heated, but like, it's been nice if people are very kind and welcoming. And so it's been a very easy transition over. But yes, that was the long version of how I got where I am with TikTok it was it was other things first <laughs> yeah so if you or Aaron go ahead either of you sorry <laughs> yeah. okay so if you could meet any player past or present who and it's just one player you just one single player past or present who would you want to hang out with for an hour and why Ooh, that's tough i will fully say past no clue because i my i'm already planning after playoffs end because there's so much constant new content that when they end i'll start doing more of the deep dives into the past stuff because i just right i can't keep up with it um oh god it's tough it would be a goalie it's just which one? Oh, it's always got to be a goalie goalies are the best Goalies, we love we are, you. We are obsessed go with goalies here. <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, it's not like, everybody calls them sway mark. Couldn't I just say that's one person? <laughs> um, probably, probably Linus uh, Omar or Jeremy Swayman. Maybe Alex Lyon, just because I think he's very entertaining. Mm -hmm. um, and some of his answers to interview questions crack me up. Uh, well, flurry Mark I think I'd in. lose it <laughs> oh yeah I would love to meet that guy he seems like a trip I think I'd just kind of like sit there quietly and be like I don't know what to say to you uh, right <laughs> he's hard to read right like personality wise like you're like is he mad is he joking I can't tell well so. I can tell you the, the couple times so I'm either like very smooth and like chill when it comes to meeting a celebrity or like somebody who's very prominent in something or I'm, you think I'm smooth and chill and I've blacked out internally. Oh, and I have a feeling sense. Flurry would be one of those where I'd get done talking to him and be like, I don't know what just happened for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> like, yeah. I'd come out of it. Oh, what'd you guys talk about? I don't know. <laughs> Do I got it recorded somewhere? I feel that. Um... I feel that. <laughs> That's my, I went and met with one of the people from Star Wars and got an autograph from her and it was very cool. But my dad went and he didn't record anything. If my mom had gone with me, she would have. So she called me and was like, oh, what are you talking about? I have no idea. Well, what do you mean you don't know? I blacked out. Well, did your dad record? <laughs> no, of course he didn't. And she's she's like, one second. Calls him. What do you mean you didn't record him? <laughs> I needed to see this. 
There's footage you'll have to find somewhere one day of Nikita Kucherov from the Tampa Bay Lightning. I think it was post maybe the 2020 or 2021 Stanley Cup. Could be wrong here, but it's an interview with him. And he's just hilarious to me because he's very blunt and like kind of to the point about stuff, but still funny. He's literally shirtless, like chugging beers, like just shirtless chugging beers. Post Stanley Cup, I believe maybe I'm wrong. My boyfriend's gonna he gonna get me later if I'm wrong about that's when it was. But just some of the like it's not as funny as like flurry pranking people, but just like in the grand scheme of it, it just cracks me up that this professional athlete is just like, mm-hmm, half naked, chugging beer. If you got any more questions. Oh, that's uh not the half naked part. But um, (laughs) the goalie for Team Canada during the Women Worlds, um, that I wish I could remember her name because I follow her, um, she posted a video, I think, today, and it's all of them just chugging beer out of the cup. And I was like, this this is great. Like, it's there is no decor. No, no, it's nope. (laughs) We won. Yeah. It's time to chug. I'm like, good for you. And plus, what a historic moment to be the first ones to get to do it out of that cup. That's pretty dope. Well, that's. I think you're thinking of the other cup. I oh, I might be thinking of the other league, actually. Not yeah, I think you're thinking, so thinking of PWHL. Yeah. So PWHL, I know their finals start after like May 5th. Oh, um, okay. This was, they had, in the middle of all of this inaugural season, they had to say, hey, we're taking a couple weeks off because it's the Women's World Championship. Um, go back to your respective countries and practice. You guys all have to play still. So yeah. I think it was mm. like... 31 players in the world championships were PWHL players. That's amazing. That's cool. Wow. It was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so since we were um, talking about goalies, uh, recently you got tagged like a bazillion times in a, a TikTok that we had put up of um, the, the Columbus River Dragons had Legends Night. So they, they every year they do it. And Legends Night is is a just such a big deal in Columbus. And Andrew Lowen, um, he was we were gonna try to have him on tonight to surprise you so you guys could just like hang out and talk for a few, but um he had a a, a game tonight, so he wasn't able to make it. So hey to you, he told me to send him the clip, so I will. But um what did you think the first time you saw that? The uh the wobbling goalie. Um, so I, I will give the background. I posted a video probably a month or two prior because all there was a, a goalie from, I think it was a European team moonwalking. Mm. And, He's so smooth. I know exactly who you're right. talking about. And I was, and a couple more that were like kid goalies that were dancing. And I, I made the video of like, excuse me, why have I been watching all of this for two, two months now? And you guys are just tagging me and dancing goalies. Like, this should have been the first thing you tagged me in. Um, they understood the assignment. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Because they did. when you guys posted the wobble, it was just everyone was like, we found one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was just like, all I just saw, I woke up and just see dancing goalie, dancing goalie, dancing goalie. And I was like, okay, I'm in. What are we doing? And I heard the wobble and just knew it was going to be good. <laughs> The uh, cool backstory on him, he used to do it, I believe it was like the end of every second period or something um, when he played for the Cotton Mouse who were there before the Dragons. Um, But yeah, that was just like his thing. And I wish every goalie had like their dance that they did. Just I I love a dancing goalie, too. So same page. (laughs) all-star event for the NHL. There needs to be like if we're not going to do an all goalie game, because I still think that could happen, but we'd need too many goalies. Um, (laughs) then I think we need to have a goalie dance off. All the goalies who got chosen so dance off. So I think that's a fair compromise. (laughs) I love that idea. I would I would tune in just for that. Everything else is like consolation prize. You know what I mean? That's well. I mean, to be fair, I I think I started watching hockey two weeks before All Star Weekend, so the actual players meant nothing to me. But then I heard that there was mascot dodgeball. And I was like, great, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Sign me up. And what do you I know? Love- My son won. Thank you. <laughs> Shout out to him. <laughs> I loved uh, that the mascots also, they had their game. And, you know, it's crazy because you can tell. I'm like, okay, the Bruins, 
that guy skates. He plays hockey. He was way too good compared to the other mascots. He was out there killing it. That's, I always wonder, and of course, of course, mascots are real. There, there's no one in the suit. Hundred percent. Realistically, <laughs> how many people do they have to play each one? Because you think about, okay, they can Same. skate. They can do like you had Gritty doing flips one time on a trampoline. Um, you've got Gritty who can throw a football from like fifty yards into a can. Like, is there how many people are there? Because yeah, it's like, insane <laughs> some of the things they do. I'm convinced they just like run up to some pro athlete and they're like, hey, can you just Throw put on this costume suit. on for like an hour? We just need a <laughs> yeah. video and you're good. Plot twist, it's the scratch a few players. Dollars. <laughs> the, yeah, I mean, like the, it's such a simple video and like everybody was focusing on how <laughs> funny it was. But like when New Jersey Devils stole Gritty's clothes in the outdoor game, the stadium series game, yeah. those two were booking it. There was no <laughs> yeah. slowdown. And I'm like, these are these are track athletes. What are you talking yeah. about? Like, this like, is, these are runners, like, like real runners. <laughs> going and not a short distance. And I'm like, I no, I'd be done a minute into that. You guys are still going. <laughs> I mean, respect to them because I'd make I'm clumsy. I'd make it like three steps in a mascot suit and just I oh, make yeah. it three steps in normal shoes and regular attire. I don't know how they're doing it. <laughs> I can tell you for sure, um, and I have recent proof, I cannot ice skate for my life. Um, it would not go well in a mascot suit. At least there'd be more padding. Yeah. That would help. <laughs> now, do you have a favorite hockey memory so far with everything you've done? Kind of watching it, following it. Um, it's. I think one of my favorite things. It's not a specific memory. It's when it happens. Um, is that now whenever there's a goalie goal, no matter what league, what level, anything. Yeah, I get tagged in it right away, and I get sent it, which I think is just the coolest thing. Um, like goalie goals on their own, incredible, rare amazing to see but the fact that i get these like first alerts yeah mm -hmm. hey this just happened like go check it out and it's really cool like <laughs> that's that's such a cool thing to be able to get tagged on that so instantly and find out about it and just the fact that fans want me to know about it yeah definitely super rare super and there's rare. been a few Late, like in the last month, there's been a couple at different levels. I love goalie goals. What about what about a Michigan? That I was on. So the one Svechnikov got, what was it, last week, the week before? Um, I had just turned on the Hurricanes game. And I had just clicked start live stream on Instagram for the first time. And I, I turn around and I'm like, what are they, like, why is everybody being weird? Why is everybody debating? Like, that's odd. And then I see what it was and I was like, oh my God, it's a Michigan. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, first one, everybody shut up. I'm, I need to look at this. Yeah. Oh, the Michigan, the skill it takes to do that move is, is absolutely incredible. I love, I love, I will watch, yeah, the Michigan videos. I think they're not quite the level of the goalie goal, but they're, they're a close second. Well, and the fact that he scored it and then it took, what, like over a minute for them to actually call it as a goal. Everybody just kept yeah. playing. And he's just kind of sitting there like, goal? <laughs> like, you see what I've done? <laughs> right. He's got this like smirk on his face. Like, yeah, I did that. You guys don't realize it yet, but I did. <laughs> Sometimes I think that's the funniest thing when you're watching and it's like getting real like high intensity and then you're you like watching the goal, waiting to see if it goes in, and then you don't see anything, and then you see players' hands go up, and they're like, "Woohoo!" And exactly. then you're like, "Oh yeah, woohoo! They got a goal!" <laughs> That's I had that issue at the Solar Bears game. I will fully admit, I'm a, I'm a teensy bit blind, um, and <laughs> I would take my glasses off for a second because I'm just not used to wearing them, and everybody'd start cheering, and I'm like, "Oh oh crap! What what did I miss? What?" <laughs> And I'm like trying to squint. Oh yeah, glasses. Oh, goal. Okay, now we get why we're standing. 
I think we uh, definitely need more live content of you watching, yeah. like, in person at the games or just. Or, like, a live stream react. That'd be you watching. Cool. Yeah. The amount of things that I, like, mumble under my breath that do not make it into those videos, mainly because it's pure idiocy. Uh, just um, this time, at least, I had my friend with me. Um, although it, the first mic'd up set of videos was with my mother. Um, oh, so the camera is just shaking because she started laughing halfway through. <laughs> Um, and then with my friend, it was just us back and forth BSing each other. So I, there's another one coming soon. I have to finish editing it, editing that. And then uh, her and I did a Canadian snack taste test recently. Um, oh, and the first video of that is up, but the second one's coming and then a blooper reel because it was just. <laughs> oh, bloopers are the best. <laughs> it was, it was probably a five to six minute taste test and i have 25 minutes of video footage because of us just losing it i love it that's fun i'm I'm gonna have to go go find the one that you put up recently and i'll I'll definitely check out your your new ones when they drop so i have a, a couple of questions uh quick questions for you um who is your stanley cup pick for this season oh see i i have a new answer for that it's me um very clearly, yes. I am going to win the Stanley <laughs> Cup with my um, very extensive knowledge of staying upright on ice and um, no idea how to use a hockey stick. Uh, it's you know, I refuse to give you an answer to that because I'm not being a. I don't want anybody coming and being like you jinxed it. Um, yeah, because fair, I I think fair. I gave an opinion one time, and when I did, that team lost after a major streak. So it's just like. It's me. I'm winning the Stanley Cup. And maybe that's it might just be that after the Stanley Cup or right before that game, that final game, I just go buy like the actual, you know, fake Stanley Cups of the drinking ones. <laughs> yeah. I like, see I won. Thank you. I have two knockoffs already. Might as well invest in a real one. <laughs> <laughs> So we have another OG question over here. We ask it every week and um, yeah, we can't go a single week without it. So tell us, what is your thoughts? Does pineapple belong on pizza? Mm. My Italian ancestors scream no. Um, (laughs) But in the right situations, I could see yes. Like it has to be, I don't like the pineapple and ham. No, I, I think that's gross. But like, with some nice, I don't know, feta, like a, a balsamic. Yeah, like a fancy bougie pizza. I could see it. That with. sounds pretty good. Fancy bougie for life. Exactly. <laughs> fancy bougie pizza can get away with fruit on their pizza. If it's like Domino's, Papa John's, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I man. absolutely agree with that. So I think we've got time for one or two more questions. Did you guys have anything else that you wanted wanted to ask tonight? I feel like we've covered a lot of it. Is there any questions that you have for us about the Fed? I know we talked off screen a little bit about how the Fed is the Walmart of hockey leagues. Um, well, okay, so this isn't Fed related. I just need to know, are you both wearing lightning jerseys? Yes. 100 <laughs> percent and, and you know, that it's might... funny because we're from very, very different places. Yeah. And um yeah, we just uh Tampa. <laughs> yeah, no, it's hundred percent on plans. Also, don't judge the fact that I'm wearing pink pants right now. <laughs> And as I'm wearing this, like, kind of, <laughs> I don't know, purpley pair. I don't know. It's a weird, just, we were, like, kind of in the moment kind of thing. So, yeah. It's it's the one team I literally can't be a fan of because all the games are blacked out here. So, whenever yeah. I well, see it, I'm just like, mm-hmm. When you mentioned that you, like, really like the Panthers, I was like, oh, I was like, I don't think she's going to like our team too much because, you know, we're kind of the rivals <laughs> or whatever. So, that, if I could watch that, the Lightning games, fun. I'd probably be a fan. And I think, like, the fir- when I bought ESPN Plus, I was like, great. I can watch both. I can just be a full-on Florida fan. And they were like, sorry, just for the do record. you want to pay $10 more? And I was like, no. <laughs> so I live in upstate stepdad. New York, and I still can't watch half the Tampa games. The majority of the, uh, there's a lot of the Tampa games that we can't watch for whatever reason. And we also have ESPN Plus. I'm just convinced Actually, no one can watch Tampa most of the time. Like, it drives I'm going to give insane. you guys a tip. 
Um, my family's from Tampa and, um, I got really obsessed with the lightning. They, um, honored my fiance at one of their games for military appreciation. And, um, Vasilevsky doesn't know this, but I'm his future wife. I know he's married, but I joke about it every week, but like, I really love you, man. <laughs> um, so I would get really upset when I couldn't watch the games. And my stepdad was, you know, he's like Google stream East and you can watch any game you want. And you might have to take three or four times to actually get it to load. But once it does, if you don't touch your screen, you can watch any game you want. Oh, so good stream old, don't East. touch your screen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've once watched a up, lot of things that way. Yeah. So that's, you know, if it's blacked out um, for me on the, you know, I'm over in, in Texas currently, but yeah, when that's, that's what I do for the game. So that, that goes for all you guys out there. There's a, a game that you want to watch, but um, I love Tampa. I think they're, they're a great team and another goalie that, yeah, another goalie fangirl over here. So they're I feel you. Goalies, man. <laughs> they're great. Something goalies about are them. the best. The yeah, goalies are the greatest. So I just wanted to wrap it up with um, two more things. One, um, what is your future plans? Do you continue? Uh, do you want to continue in the hockey realm and keep continuing to make hockey content? For right now, yeah. I mean, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, I'm terrified for playoffs, but uh, I one of the things I've already said is like we're going to do a weir- uh, weekly uh, beard and facial hair ranking because I've heard nice. that some of that yeah. just gets very chaotic. Um, and then into the summer and stuff, just probably going to do some throwback things. Uh, at this point, I mean, I'm kind of just posting what I want to post. And a lot of that just happens to be hockey. Um, it might branch more into lifestyle at some point, but just kind of going where it takes me. And right now it's, it's very much hockey. (laughs) Yeah. I love that. Keeping it open just in, you know, for whatever comes your way. Um, and then the last thing, um, well, to things, I guess. I, we wanted to say thank you so much for joining us. You have been absolutely phenomenal. We think your thank content's you. great. Um, but if you have any fans that- about any of this is baffling to me still. Um, and as I finish a lot of my videos, always let's go hockey. Definitely. Well, you know, if you want, uh, we'll have to check back in. We'll keep sending you some, um, some fed content. And if, Definitely. you know, you if you get into the Fed at all, um, we'd love to have you back on and kind of get your thoughts on what you think of all of that. And I just, again, we want to extend a big thank you for joining us. And um, yeah, we appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much.